Hey, I'm Jesse here at the Wolfram Tech Conference 2017, and I'm just talking with developers and interesting people who are using our technology in really kind of innovative ways. And I'm here with Shadi, who's going to tell us a little bit about what she does uh, here at the company, and she has some cool stuff uh, in show for us. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> hey. So, hi, I'm basically Shadi Oshne. I'm the manager of image signal processing here at Wolfram. Um, over the past year, it's exciting to see that we are developing even, even at a faster pace compared to 10 years ago when we first started image processing. Now we are a total of more than 350 functions from just the image and signal processing capabilities. Um, I'm excited to show everyone the new additions and see their use uh, from our users. Okay, so what are some of the, I guess, biggest improvements from 11.2 that are going to be in the upcoming 11.3 build? Basically, one of the biggest uh, advancements that we are seeing now in the image and signal processing is the use of neural networks and machine learning. Um, a lot of more, a lot of smarter, higher level functions that user can actually just take and don't worry about the underlying algorithm, see the result right away. I would, I would say that's probably the number one uh, big advance, advancement that we have had um, within the Wolfram language. We are also trying to be a bit more applied, so we are one at a time looking at the different verticals, including uh, photography, microscopy, astronomy, anywhere um, in different domains of research and application that uh, people may be dealing with some images or audio signals or other types of signals, and trying to see what are the needs that they have from a software um, like the Wolfram language, and then mm -hmm. trying to fill in the holes, um, add more capabilities, integrate it with the rest of the system, and make sure all of the workflows that they have is basically complete and easy to accomplish so that they can solve their problems in a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it is very important for us to do look at these applications and try to solve it for ourselves as well, just to make sure the workflows are um, efficient. Mm -hmm. um, Wolfram language is... Um, a, a very huge programming language, yeah. <laughs> high level. So it's important for us not to be a little island doing mm -hmm. image and signal processing only. So we are building bridges into other parts of the language, making use of great capabilities of symbolic and numeric um, calculations that we have in the system, as well as geometric regions, um, time series. So we're trying to be the more modern structures like um, data sets, for instance, and trying to really leverage all of that. It's going um, to it's gonna really bring a much easier experience to the user at the end if the whole system is well integrated. Um, whenever we do find inconsistencies, we try to fix it. Whenever we design new functions, we try to make it consistent with the rest of the system uh, with the rest of the system so that the user doesn't have to keep remember um, the special cases for different functions so consistency I think is one of the big aspects I've been looking into it um, very specifically for especially like image audio you know at, at, at least that domain and then the rest of the system um, in my talk uh, later today is actually uh, gonna be a uh, details of it but let's not get into the details um, and as I said, um, feature complete. And the last one I have here is better documented. Uh, we can't attach ourselves to the system and go out and talk about what we produce. So the documentation of the Wolfram language, which is already great, is I think the number one source for everyone to get started yeah. and uh, with the language and get started in new areas of the language. So we are really putting a lot of effort into adding examples to our documentations. Application section is one of the best places to go to. Oh, I use that all the time whenever I don't know how to use a function. So, exactly. Yeah. But then things like options, possible issues, how this function relates to other functions. So we are really putting uh, some very dedicated care into updating our documentation, making it more intuitive and usable for our users. Mm -hmm. So I don't know much about neural nets. Um, I only ever see it in the domain of data science. I've never like seen it used in image processing. So what exactly are neural nets used for in, in this area? You've probably seen image identify, right? I, I have. I, I don't know how it works, but yes, I've, okay. I've used that. So the idea of neural networks is basically, and then it's not a new concept, it's an older concept. The reason why it's brought up again in this era is that because the power of the com computers is greater than what it was three decades ago. So uh, computers can handle big data and can handle neural networks with a whole lot more layers. Uh, the additional layers is actually going to give capability for the users not to actually pre-process their data, in our case images or audio, and just pass kind of the raw data, just the image, into the neural network and have the network learn the features that is going to be useful for any task like classification and things like that. 
image identify in our system was the first function that used the neural network framework that is introduced in the language. Mm -hmm. um, all it does, as in this example, it says identify what are the objects in the image and, and this says it's an apple red delicious. Mm -hmm. um, second function that uh, we are trying to work on is to, see, is to be able to find individual objects or different objects in an image. This image contents is now giving us a data set with bounding boxes and uh, oh, that's cool. class, you know, dimension is basically uh, extracted from bounding box, the little sub-image of it, and even the probability, so how, how confident we are. That's like, uh, that's a big Where's Waldo, uh, uh, I, I mean, sense. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is Where's Waldo. Yeah. Want, have you tested it on a Where's Waldo image? No, in fact, this is this is not even documented yet oh. in 11, 2, 11, 3, uh, but we are talking about it. It's coming. It's This one, this instance, is just trained on about 100 classes of objects, so it doesn't understand everything in the world, including the Waldo. But, um, it is going to be trained on, on a more sophisticated data set and eventually, you know, just, just be able to explain what is in the image. What is this image? It's a, mm. a, you know, in this case, we can say it's a dining table with so many fruits on it, right? Yeah. So already from the classes of objects that you detect from the image, you can explain what's happening in the image, which is, uh, is kind of science fiction <laughs> of three decades ago, right? Nobody guessed we would actually could do things like that. Um, but there is more than um, image uh, classification or object classification in the image. Things like restyling, which uh, is being, I think, demoed a lot in this conference. <laughs> well, it's and very fun. It's a very fun, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very fun function. So, so you can, this one is basically takes, uh, the neural network is basically getting two big inputs, mm -hmm. the input image and the style image, and then uh, passes this through the network trying to find similar regions in the input image, uh, in the style image to the local regions of the input image and restyle it so that it actually eventually look like a style image. So in this case, we're just styling that same image, the fruits, um, to just a painting of a uh, winter season. That's and, cool. Yeah. I don't know how to do any art, so I can be an instant artist with this. That's there you very go. Cool. <laughs> there you go. And then this is, for instance, another application example. Mm -hmm. You're looking at an image and trying to guess uh, what are you know what's the depth for every pixel mm -hmm. in the image. So here we are using NetModel, which is as well a new function in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of pre-trained, a lot of pre-trained networks. A lot more is going to be added, not only by us internally, but we're mm -hmm opening it up for submission to external people as well. So for instance, this network was uh, trained on a bunch of uh, images and then ground truth known depth for the image as well. Mm -hmm. And then given that knowledge, now passing it a new image, it can actually understand or guess, estimate what's the depth for each individual pixel in the image. And then we can put this in a kind of a 3D plot um, to show what's the depth for each pixel of the image. Well, uh, correctly, the, the pair actually shows up being a bit closer. Um, this reminds me of something. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Hi. We're doing a Facebook Live session, so you're on camera, oh, say hey. Oh, great. Sorry, hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was Matteo, actually, who has uh, actually converted this. Um, oh, yeah, he uh, made this? He's, uh, he's converted a lot of these pre-trained network, uh, networks into our system, in fact, working uh, primarily on this net model function and the network repository that's going to be released hopefully very soon. Cool. So it sounds like there's a lot of like new, uh, just incredible features that are going to be in the upcoming 11.3 uh, build. Can you tell me a little bit? I I looked at your your talk a little bit before this. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the speech recognition stuff that you're hoping to to, to roll out yeah. eventually? Well, let me start with audio in general. <laughs> Audio was introduced last year in version 11. Um, already, I think it was great. One of the best aspects of our audio object in Mathematica is that it can handle both in-core and out-of-core version of an audio object. So uh, you can bring all of the data into the memory for faster processing. But if your data is larger, if you have a whole bunch of even smaller single audio files, but very so many of them, you practically cannot bring all of that data into the memory. So you can interact with all of those files uh, as an, uh, in an out-of-core fashion, so you're just linking to the file, reading, streaming data from the files into the system, processing and using it, and then putting it back or, or discarding it, basically. Okay. So this is one of the great aspects. Now, where are we going with audio? Already in uh, version 11, we had a whole bunch of filtering and processing and analysis and extracting features, like what's the loudness of the audio object and uh, what are the spectral features of the audio 
where is the frequency and where is the uh, fundamental, but the main frequency, where are the, what are the formats of this audio object, which is one of the fundamental things that people will need in speech and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, however, as we are going smarter and more higher level, obviously people do not want to learn necessarily everything about fundamentals of speech analysis. So we thought it would be more um, on target if we start doing things like direct speech recognition, um, for instance, or um, speech synthesis, which is one of the things for any um, conversational system that you would like to build in. Basically, you need speech recognition, then some text analysis to do, you know, in the back end, right. understand what the what the spoken uh, audio was and then try to either come up with an answer or infer some knowledge from it and then give an answer or continue the conversation using speech synthesis system. Mm -hmm. So um, speech synthesize was the first uh, function and well after all of those lower level um, audio measurements towards speech we introduced speech synthesize as still as an experimental feature I think in 11.1. But we are moving on with uh, neural network capabilities for doing uh, more sophisticated analysis of the signals specifically towards speech. Uh, we're going to be doing, based on the features we get back from speech signal, we will be able to do resynthesis as well, which is uh, kind of a more uh, effect-like uh, signal speech signal processing so if I want to make myself look like Minnie Mouse I can probably do that with the upcoming speech resynthesis mm -hmm. function and then speech recognizes I think the uh, still not completely resolved still under active research development as well we're going to be putting a whole lot of uh, emphasis on that as well for uh, in our upcoming versions the the reason why we haven't done a whole lot of it is that the uh, research on specifically neural network on audio is just advancing as we speak as well. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, the neural network capabilities within the Wolfram language was slightly behind uh, handling audio. Mm -hmm. uh, so the very low level features and needs that we have for doing audio processing using neural networks is just being built up as, as we speak. Okay, yeah. So, so I think there's going to be a whole lot of opportunities ahead of us now that we have a start on it, but um, I think speech basically is going to be the very first um, application domain of audio processing that we're going to be looking at. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for talking with me, Shadi. I really appreciate you and talking to the viewers here, too. Um, so, thanks uh, again. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. We can't get to them here. Um, but definitely go on community.wolfram.com, uh, see if someone has your question. And we might be able to get to the questions you leave in the comments later. Uh, you can also private message the Wolfram account. Okay. Thank um, you. Uh, thanks.